Hello and thanks for joining us for our show on the Berlin Film Festival. This year, the Me Too movement is front and centre. People from the world of film have been reacting to the producer Harvey Weinstein's conviction of a criminal sexual act and third degree rape following a six week trial in New York Supreme Court earlier this week. We can cross to Berlin now, where we're joined by Emma Jones. Now, Emma, the Berlin Al is experiencing an interesting moment for women, isn't it? Yes, that verdict coming in the middle of this festival, it almost feels like a real tipping point here for women. It's the 70th anniversary of the Berlinale. There are two new co-directors, one of whom is a woman. And then there's also a golden bear going to a very gutsy, outspoken actress, Helen Mirren. And there are also six films in competition by women. Now, two to mention in particular, they really feel like the fruit of the Me Too era. One is a film called The Assistant by Kitty Green. And this is the fictitious story of a young woman who goes to work for an entertainment mogul. Then there is Never, Rarely, Sometimes, Always by Eliza Hitman. This is a film about abortion tourism. Two girls go to New York because there isn't the support in rural Pennsylvania. Now, Eliza Hitman was just one of many women at the festival to give her reaction to the Weinstein verdict. Personally, um, I still haven't formed my opinion because I think that there is a vast difference between five and 25 years in prison. And I think that obviously five years would be a very light sentence. I'm just happy that people now know that there are consequences because for a long time um, there were no consequences and a lot of people thought that they could get away with anything and I think that now that is going to change. I think the, the women who, 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 came, who came forward throughout this whole process have been incredibly courageous and, um, and the fact that they have... Um, they, they're, their experience has been honoured and respected and respected and justice has been um, served to, 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 to some degree. I, I think it's, um, it's, it's a huge, profound relief. Interestingly, the verdict came just after the premiere of Hillary, for which former First Lady and presidential candidate Hillary Clinton was in town. Now, this is a four-hour documentary about Hillary Clinton, and it's directed by Nanette Burstein. Uh, Clinton accepted that she was still very much a polarising figure on the world stage, and she said that she hoped this documentary would put the record straight from her perspective. So let's have a, have a listen to her. And also to see a little bit of that film. I think the director, uh, Nanette Burstein, was uh, very uh, effective in doing that. And part of it is, you know, having someone who you admire and uh, believe is uh, honorable and honest, like Nanette, to do the film, um, because I, I think it's important to tell the real story and not allow a lot of the, you know, the myths and the crazy, you know, stuff that goes on uh, to be in any way uh, taken for the truth, because it's not. Okay, if he's awake. Oh, oh. he's awake. Wake him up. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably trying to call you, Ryan. Right? Yeah, what do you mean only 1,200 votes? Because otherwise it's going to be like... Just a minute, hang on a Whoa. second. <laughs> yeah! Hysteria on the <laughs> <laughs> CNN and NBC just called it. Missouri? Yeah. Hillary Clinton, still one of the most famous women in the world. Now, one of the most famous men in the world, Johnny Depp, has also been in Berlin for the premiere of his new Japanese film, Minamata. Uh, Johnny Depp in dispute with his ex-wife, Amber Heard, at the moment, and there were legions of Johnny Depp fan on that red carpet when he came to the premiere. Uh, they practically mobbed him, very, very keen and eager to show their support to that actor. So the question is, Emma, are there any favourites for the festival's top prize, the Golden Bear? 
That is a very, very interesting one. And I tell you what has emerged as a, as a late favourite is the Eliza Hitman film about abortion tourism. Now, that would certainly be a moment for that filmmaker if she takes away the golden bear. Now, Berlin does really like eclectic choices, however. And there is a film here uh, called Dow Natasha that you never know might end up scooping that top prize. Now, this is the fil first film to emerge from the immersive art project uh, called Dow, which has cost millions of pounds and been highly controversial. It involves hundreds of people giving up their everyday lives and going to live in the Ukraine as, uh, as they did during the Soviet era. Natasha is the story of a waitress in a canteen. It features a lot of graphic abuse, graphic sex. It's very eerie and dysfunctional. OK, well, let's take a look at Dow Natasha. <laughs> А ты придешь завтракать. Мам, ю, ты, ленч, буфет. And that film, however controversial, has been attracting a lot of five-star reviews. Another film to mention is The Roads Not Taken by Sally Potter, who is a former Golden Bear winner herself. It stars Javier Bardem, Salma Hayek and Elle Fanning. They've certainly brought a lot of glamour to the red carpets in Berlin, but I mention it because Elle Fanning puts in a stellar performance as the daughter of a man with early-onset dementia, and that's played by Javier Bardem. And that performance by by Elle Fanning certainly marks her coming of age as a really serious uh, actress. Okay, well, let's take a look. This is from The Roads Not Taken. Nestor is there? Mm -hmm. Nestor? Mm, Nestor is no longer with us. He's in heaven. No. Doggy heaven. No. Mm. He was a very good dog. Mm. Oh, Nestor? Nestor? Is he getting agitated? We can give him something to calm him down. Why does everyone continue to refer to Dad as he? As if he's not here? What is he? Well, that certainly looks like one to watch. Emma, tell us about the French films in the competition. Yeah, there's several of them. Uh, it includes Philippe Garel, veteran French filmmaker. He's got a film here called The Salt of Tears, and this is shot in black and white. It's, it's a romantic drama about the adventures of a young man. There's also Anne Fontaine. She is back with a police drama called Police Night Shift. And possibly the French film to watch is a film called Delete History, and this is by a couple of co-directors, Benoit Delaphine and Gustave Kevin. And it's a really sly comedy, a look at the, uh, the online world. One of its protagonists is going to face blackmail because of a leaked sex tape. And interestingly, uh, both directors decided to thank the, uh, the, the French politician Benjamin Griveaux, who had to uh, withdraw from Paris elections after a similar situation ar arisen, ar arisen to him. So uh, let's hear from them. Without Benjamin Griveaux, we would be bored. We wouldn't even be here. He had his story, we immediately made a film, and boom. He's the one who helped us out the most. It certainly sounds intriguing. Let's take a look at this film. Um, this is Delete History. Ah, no, 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 je... Non, je peux plus faire l'amour avec vous, monsieur. Je... Je... Je le saurais, hein, quand même. Donc, vous m'avez offert un whisky. Donc, à ce moment-là, je vous ai proposé de venir dormir chez moi. Et, et, et on a fait l'amour. Comment ça, une vidéo Vas-y, comme ça. Enfin, Qu'est-ce que c'est que ça Qu'est-ce que c'est Qu'est-ce que c'est tenu, ridicule Ouais, parce que je suis breton, ma, ma grand-mère a inventé la galette saucisse. Ça, c'est un gros mignon, ça. Ouais. Oh oui. Putain, le sex tape. Et faut, faut effacer ça tout de suite Si je veux vous faire chanter, je vais pas l'effacer. 
there's also quite a few German films in competition, as you would expect. And uh, my personal favourite, and it seems to be the critics' favourite, uh, is Ondine, or Undine, to give it its local pronunciation. And that's a film by transit director Christian Petzold. And it reunites two of his, his those stars, Paula Beer and uh, Franz Rogowski. It's, uh, it's a really, really good film. I should also mention, continuing with the, with the European feel of this year's competition, Matteo Garoni's uh, live-action Pinocchio. Now, this has been a much-anticipated film, and I do wonder if the, uh, the actual live-action wooden Pinocchio is going to scare young children. Uh, but Roberto Benigni is also in it, uh, the famous Italian actor. He plays Geppetto in this film. And true to form, he can't stop joking, and even on the red carpet here in Berlin, he was joking about the coronavirus, of all things. Oh yes, I'm very worried, very worried. So better to stay like this. Very worried, very worried. Stay, stay, don't, 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 don't touch me. So Emma, TV um, is now bigger than film in Berlin in terms of offering big names. Yes, there's a whole uh, festival series here called Berlinale Series, which features television and Hillary, really, I suppose, as part of that, because that's going to go on Hulu. And that is really an acknowledgement of how important television is and how audiences want to see TV. Probably the biggest name here in terms of television has been Kate Blanchett. Now, she's here with a very hard-hitting drama called Stateless. And it's really, it, told, it tells the story of migrants and the people who uh, look after migrants and also, I suppose, judge migrants as well. And it's told from several different perspectives. Kate Blanchett, obviously a big name, expected uh, to pull in the viewers uh, to what can be a difficult subject to watch. OK, Emma Jones, it's been a pleasure. Enjoy the rest of the festival. And we're going to leave you with the TV series Stateless, starring Kate Blanchett, showing at the festival. The winners of the Berlinale will be announced at um, a ceremony this Saturday. Remember our website. We're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. Outside, you will see the future. Your dreams will change. When you tell me your mate was such a kid, were you? Come for a drink. Families are being destroyed. If Corvo can't get the camels off the roof, I'm sending someone out there who can. I will deal with Canberra. We just need to keep this away from the media. <laughs> you see my family? Well, there are places like this all over Australia. Why? Because we are terrorists. Yeah.